Hello and welcome back to A Splash of Paint where it's time for a quick and easy bite-sized project designed to encourage you to try your hand at something new. Today it's the turn of international pastel artist Vic Baycroft who is going to show us how easy it is to create your favourite animal using just a few simple shapes. For this art bite we're going to have a look at uh, using some simple shapes to create in this case a horse's head. Uh, always start off with a circle to represent the head and with a little bit of practice try to make the circle with your arm before putting it down on the paper. With a little bit of practice you should be able to get a near perfect circle. It, it does take some practice but uh, do keep trying it. It's the most important shape you'll ever have to do. And then what we'll do is we'll divide it down the centre which will be the centre of our nose if the horse is looking straight at us. We need an eye line which is across there and then we need the nose itself. Of course you can vary the length of this shape to suit pretty much any animal you want. In the case of a horse we'll have a long snout like that, pretty much like an ice cream cone at the moment. Uh, ears can simply be described using basic triangles and the muzzle itself by two triangles atop each other. So we have the horse's muzzle there, the eye line, the ears, and then if you take a darker colour, we can actually tidy that up a bit and make it slightly more realistic. Remember that using this technique, you can make the nose longer or shorter, the ears longer and shorter, whatever you want to do. So let's just round it off a little bit, uh, bring the temple in at both sides, eyes go about there, the eyelashes and so on, and then we can round off the nose, and round into the muzzle, the nostrils about here, and the mouth and the lower lip there, and then ears of course can be rounded off slightly, make them look a little bit more natural, and we'll have maybe a bit of a forelock coming over here, and a flash down the centre of the nose perhaps, and then if we want to make it look slightly more realistic, we can just take a little bit of a neck and some shoulder down there. And you can see how easy it is to begin your own freehand horse portrait. Thanks for that fantastic feature there, Vic. It just goes to show how a few simple shapes can create an amazing work of art in any kind of medium. Now it's time to return to today's watercolour painting and finish it off. So this is nice and dry. What I'm going to do next is mix up a few more colours and we're going to go for the nice dark silhouetted trees. So I'll start off with the large brush again, size 20. I want to mix up a good, strong, rich colour. So I'm going to dig deep in the fresh, juicy squirt of natural grey, straight from the tube there, folks. I want it heavy, I want it strong, I want it thick. And I'm going to mix it with some burnt sienna, a little bit of burnt sienna, just to make it slightly warmer and a slight browny tinge to the colour. So that's the rich, powerful colour. If I clean your brush again. The second colour I need for the trees is natural yellow. Because a bit of a misconception, trees aren't always brown. You get greens, you get greys. So natural yellow, which is a sandy colour, is quite nice for the lighter side of the tree. So I've got plenty of the dark, plenty of the light. I'll go for the size 6 brush for the trees. I'm going to go straight in for the dark, rich colour. And the reason for mixing with the large brush was to give me a large quantity of colour. Very dark and silhouetted at this point. So first of all, start at the bottom and do the darker side. Now we all say the light's coming in from this side, okay? Which will make it easier for us. And we're going to go in and do the darker side of the tree. Now where a branch goes off to the side, we can leave a slight gap. Put a few wobbles and blobs and things on it. And there's a tree next door to this one, so I'll do that as well. Again, putting the dark on first. And you can see how dark it is. It's also a good thick width of line as well, this one. And again, it's painting the tree in the direction it grows, which makes much more sense. And then I get the branch coming up. Remember, the darker side will be the left of it. And then get the branch coming out there. So very dark, 
shapes there. Clean your brush, go for natural yellow, which is a lot thinner than the grey, and I'll basically scribble it in and work it out from the edge of the grey. So you can kind of go over right to the edge that you've already painted. But as you move off to the uh, right hand side, you can work right up to the edge of the tree. And you can see it gives a nice light effect and it almost makes it look as though it's round. The bottom doesn't matter at this stage because that will just work in. There we go. And of course I've got a little branch coming up the side there as well which we'll come back to shortly. Same for this one. Start to blend it out from the first shadow grey. The grey and the burnt sienna mixed together. And then do the branch coming off. But I want you to scrub the grey. I want the grey to actually mix on the paper. This way it looks round. And think about the shape. Don't just paint a, a definite sort of telegraph pole. It wants to look like it's all gnarled. It's a good word, that gnarl. All wobbly and blobby and things. As we branch out to the sides, we'll start to drop in one or two branches. Now, use whatever colours on your brush and just let these branches just kind of flick and just happen. But try and flick them away at the ends if you can. This brush has got a lovely point on the end, so it lets me go straight in and get that nice point. And any branch that you think you could do, and the lighter ones, the natural yellow ones, will look as though they're behind the tree. And if we drop some darker ones in a little bit later on, that'll give us the ones in front of the tree. So I'm just adding some lighter branches, and some of these you'll barely see. But the main thing is making the ends flick off. I'm just going to turn the board on its side because one of the problems you get when you're painting trees left-handed or right-handed is that you need to work sometimes a bit clumsy. So it's, it makes sense to do this every so often, turn the board on the side. And that way you can do both sides a lot easier. So I'm still using this brush and just adding one or two more branches, some larger, some skinnier ones. The best bit of advice is to step back on your picture a little bit and look at it from a distance and see just how much detail you need to put in there and see if there's something looking a bit odd. I've got to add a few more branches coming in there, that sort of thing. Just going to use a little bit of uh, natural yellow on the lighter side of the larger ones. And then we'll move over to a rigger, a rigger brush. And then we'll just add some nice fine branches coming from both sides of the tree. There we go. And this is the kind of thing that you can always come back to because as you do these branches, you'll probably end up finding that you've missed a few off or maybe you need to add some more, that kind of thing. So it's the sort of thing that you could look back at your picture once you've done it and decide later on if you need to add any more to it. If we turn it back that way for the second, we can see it's giving quite a nice feel to that tree there. And this is the main one because this actually frames the footpath and it makes a nice sort of entrance to the picture, which is really important. Let's do the other tree on the other side. This is a smaller tree, this one. So we'll use the darker colour first and we'll just take it up again, darker side in the direction it grows. A few wobbly bits, use the point of the brush if you need to. Clean your brush, go for the natural yellow, and then use that colour to put the lighter side on. Exactly the same as you've just done. And again, use the point of the size 6 brush to add the nice, fine detail. I'll turn it on the side again so we can put some skinny branches on. And I'll just add in a few more branches where I see fit. Move on to the rigger brush and then add some nice detailed twiggy branches. 
almost silhouetting against the sky at this point. And again, it's getting into the routine of flicking it away at the end of the branches. That's what makes a successful tree like this. I've just got a bit more natural yellow on my brush there. I'll switch it back that way. I see it's making quite a nice composition at this point. So just add in a couple more of the final branches, just moving towards the center and the sides. I will put some leaves on these, obviously, before we finish. And I'm going to use the size 6 brush in the same dark colour, put a bit of dry brush, so take it away on some tissue first. And then we can drop some shadows into this. Imagine the light coming through the trees from this right hand side of the picture. You get nice little flicks, almost on a curve, and it puts the natural shadows of the tree, and this would be on both sides as well. So I would just sort of jump from one side to the other and just flick them in. It also gives a bit of texture as well. You get quite a lot of these at the tops of the trees if you look in the woodlands on a nice evening. This has got an evening feel, this picture to me. It looks as though it's uh, an autumn evening because the warm light, and of course the warm light shines from the trees as well. Okay, I'm going to use this same dark colour and where the trees finish, I'm just going to turn it into a bit of a shadow casting down towards the water. Can you see I'm coming down from the edge almost into an L shape and just let it work back. Use a little bit of water just to soften the edges. Other side as well, from the edge of the tree. That's the grey with the burnt sienna. And then you could just use a bit of water just to sort of taper them off and make them look as though they are more part of the picture. There we go. I want to use the reflection of the trees in the water, so I'll put the dark on first. but take it under the edge of the uh, banking, same on this side. Think about the angles, tree goes that way, goes the same way in the actual water as well. So I'll bring that down, clean your brush, just dab it over tissue, and then we'll just kind of smudge and scribble that away. Try if possible to fade it away at the bottom. You can almost see that working already there. Same for this one as well. Just use a little bit of water, not too much. So dab it on a bit of tissue first. And then use the same colour, stand back from your picture a little bit and add some ripples. So if we just kind of go over the top, if you stand up and walk away as you do this, so a slight distance, if any go on a bit harsh, just use a bit of water on them and just give them a bit of a smudge, really. So a bit of a dry brush is normally good for this. So lots of horizontal lines, and then use water, straight from the water pot, to bed those in. In fact, even go for the large brush, the size 20 at that point, and then you could really smudge them in a little bit on the ends. And it just pushes them in and makes them look more as though it's meant to be there. Come back to the water in a few seconds. I'm just going to go for this ripped off piece of card. It gives me a nice natural edge. And as opposed to using a sponge, I'm going to use the Matthew Palmer Tree and Texture Brush, the large one, okay? And I'll just clean the brush first, but dab it on tissue so it's not soaking wet. And then your palette mix up a nice aureolin and natural blue, quite thick. Lots of blue make it dark. Make it darker by adding a little bit of alizarin crimson. Don't be afraid to make it slightly darker, give it a stipple. Use the rough edge on the base of the trees. And then we're just going to stipple 
I'm going to put a bit more blue in that colour. I'm going to stipple this edge. So this is a more refined way than the sponge. And it gives me a nice little edge. Take the card away and you can see it gives quite a natural line which will soften in a few seconds. We'll jump over to this side. Same thing. I'll drop in a bit of grey over there as well. So just pick some natural grey up and just drop a little bit at the bottom there. And I'll just come back to this side and drop in a little bit of the grey just to sit it down in the picture. Pop that brush away. Use the size six brush and just use a little bit of water on the bottom of the brush, not too much, just to make it look more as though it's meant to be in the picture. Smudge it in a little bit. And that will attach it, you see, to the scene. You could always use your fingernail and just scratch off little bits of twigs and random foliage. And then I want to water the green down a touch and just put a little bit of moulding or a bit of shape into this sort of foreground banking area. Even shadows, I guess you could say, really. So this is a watered down green. And it also helps it to go up from the water's edge a little bit. Use pale grey just to add one or two more little ripples in the water. Use the dark colour from the trees. Just going to add a little bit of darkness on the edge of the banking so we know where the water kind of starts and stops. Just a bit of a random scribble as you go across, really. Very dark, very thick. A little bit of water just to work it in to the picture there. One of the nicest things about painting water, just very quickly, if we turn this on the side, this way, we can actually use a bit of a dry brush and you can just drop in one or two little flicks coming downwards into the water's edge. And it helps the water look as though it's got a drop to it. Not too many of these and do them quite quickly. It's quite an important thing to do in the water, really. Turn it back over, you can see it just gives a bit of a drop and then you can compensate by adding a couple of little wiggly ripples over the top. And literally the last part of this picture, the last thing to do is to come back to that green, that tree brush again, and just add a little bit of detailed foliage. I'm using the green because that's on the brush. You could use the sponge for this if you're very careful. The tree brush is a lot more refined than the sponge, and that just gives me some extra leaf. I'm just going to go straight into the aureolian colour and then just stick it straight in the green, and that'll make a lighter version. As you can see, it's putting the foliage on just to finish up the... And if you wanted to push the boat out, you could even go into burnt sienna and have a bit more autumn colour. And it all, all the detail helps, really, when it comes to a picture like this. And I think we can safely say, folks, that there is a nice, finished, atmospheric, wonderful, warm light autumn scene. Well, folks, I hope that today's project has inspired you to try your hand at creating your own stunning watercolour landscapes, whatever your artistic ability. And remember, we're always interested in seeing how you get on. Simply visit the website, which is sia.co.uk, for details on how you can interact with one of the largest online art communities. But now, folks, it's time for our final break. But join us in part four when we help solve a few of your artistic dilemmas. I'll see you soon. <laughs> <laughs>